There's lots of different considerations. Say on your, your large spessartine, you almost don't worry about inclusions, except that some of them are really big, and you have to worry about those, like the ones that are affect the structure of the stone. Say right here, there's a big flaw, a crack in there. You wouldn't be able to leave that in. You'd have to cut around that. But all the little tiny dots and spots in there, you can cut. So you have to make decisions about what stays in, what doesn't. You can end up with your black spots of polish stuck in holes if some of them reach the surface. But in general, you're looking more for color and shape on these garnets, uh, specifically these Loliondo ones. There's some crystal surfaces left over from the broken chunk. These are some massive crystals. And some of them are better off carving because then you take out all the big, nasty, ugly spots and you've got a very attractive looking stone left. The glow from the inside after these are polished is, I think, very warming and uh, convincing material. These little spessartines, uh, as I said, you have to work around the inclusions, the little white dots. See, and they're usually right in the middle, so you cut through those or make the decision to leave them in. And the color is intense. On some of them, you might leave them in, but really the value is in the cleaner stone that, with the bright, clean reflection. That's one reason many of these haven't been cut, is they have an inclusion right in the middle, and that really needs to be worked around. The molly garnets are like nodules. These are obviously an, an alluvial uh, location. These are probably going to give you your best yield. You just dop those up wherever you find a flat spot and cut them out. And they're practically preforms for rounds, and they sparkle all day long. The rhodolites are the exact same way. They're practically flawless. You just orient it for shape. There's no consideration for color. Since they're isotropic, the color is going to be the same in any direction. So the rhodolites are very fun to cut, as well as the molly. You don't have to worry about inclusions. Same with these small hessonites. Since they're tumbled, you can see inside them and know what you're looking for. And, and on these, I think my choice would be color first, inclusion second. A certain number of inclusions are going to be acceptable because this is not, not as common rough as you might think, seeing how much of it I have, which is a kilo. But uh, they're going to cut very pretty, bright little stones, nothing too large. The yield will be nowhere near as new good as it is with the the more appropriately shaped rough, but that's easy to work with. It's very nice since it's clean. These garnets are basically good for cabbing. There's really no fastening material in there. The color's nice, but that's one reason I don't know where I got them. They're not great. I probably will never be selling these. These small garnets, if you'll notice, every single one of them has a black dot on them. Those black dots are where I was going to drill these. I was going to drill these through and make a necklace. I have more of garnet crystals. These are all actually fairly intact gr garnet crystals without broken surfaces. In the Savorite, you get what you can. For the most part, you want clean stones. Certain numbers of veils and inclusions are acceptable. So we mostly just go for color on these. A clean Savorite is worth much more than a, a flawed Savorite, but none of these are going to cut stones that are really big enough to worry about on that. I might get a one carat stone out of some of these. And there's a wide variation in color. That's a very, very nice color. These lighter, springier colors are not worth anywhere near as much, and I, I think they wouldn't even be called Savorite. They'd just simply be called a green grossular.